Okay, so now we want to know where do minerals come from? So in nature, how do they come into being? So one way that a mineral can form is from the solidification of a melt. So a melt is going to be like magma. So it's going to have uh, inside of it ions and it's going to have some silica and it's going to have some gases. And so as it cools off, what can happen is those silicas can start to hook together and they eventually can make crystals of quartz. Now, what would happen though if you've got quartz and you start to heat it up? Well then, what's going to happen is those atoms that makes up the quartz, they're going to begin to vibrate and they can vibrate so hard that the molecule begins to come apart and then we liquefy the um, quartz and it turns back into a melt. So we can form minerals from a melt and then we can destroy them if we heat them up too much. Okay, another way of making a mineral is through precipitation. Um, so you can have a particular chemical substance that will precipitate uh, when it's in water. So for example, carbon dioxide, what you breathe out, mixes with seawater and it can make calcium carbonate which then precipitates to the bottom of the ocean and then can be cemented together uh, to make limestone. So the mineral is calcite and it is calcium carbonate and it originates as carbon dioxide mixing with seawater. Uh, when we talk about uh, precipitate, uh, think about if you take sugar and you put it into water and you stir it up, the sugar dissolves, it goes away. But if you have too much sugar in your water, it will start to precipitate to the bottom of the glass. And so similarly, if ocean water has too much carbon dioxide mixed into it, it will start to react uh, with calcium and make calcium carbonate, and then that precipitates to the bottom and forms the mineral calcite, which can be put together to make the sedimentary rock limestone. Now, look over there to the side, and so if we can create a mineral from a precipitate, can we also destroy one? And yes, we can. So, for example, uh, what can happen is once you have the limestone, water can percolate through it, and if that water is acidic and it gets that acid, it becomes acidic again from carbon dioxide. So, rainwater mixes with carbon dioxide to make uh, uh, a uh, acid and then that acid as it percolates through limestone dissolves the calcium carbonate and then what you're left with is basically holes in the ground which we call caves. Okay, so notice that a mineral can be created and it can also be destroyed by water. Okay, the next one is precipitation from a gas. And so this happens uh, around volcanoes where sulfur, for example, as it cools off, will glom onto the existing rocks and cover it in this yellowish powder. So do you think we could get rid of it? Yeah. So if we were to heat up those rocks, then what could happen is that sulfur could evaporate. So it could go away. Uh, the next one is biological. So for example, there are these microscopic little animals called diatoms, and what they do is they live in the ocean and they absorb silica, and they use that silica to make their shells with. So they manufacture quartz. Uh, you can also have biological activity can destroy a mineral. 
So there are certain kinds of bacteria that just as a natural uh, metabolic process, they make acids and they can actually dissolve the minerals that are in a rock and some of these bacteria actually eat that material. Uh, another way of destroying a mineral is chemical. So an example of that would be rust. So oxygen mixes with iron to make rust. And then there's also another one called solid state diffusion in which uh, you have a mineral and then what can happen is when it's under pressure or it's heated up a little bit, those atoms have the ability to kind of move one atom at a time through that material. And so when those atoms move, it changes the internal structure of the mineral and it can alter the identity of the mineral. So those are some different ways of making a mineral and then destroying a mineral. So in our next segment, we want to talk about now, how do you identify minerals?